we're here with Amanda Wiss, make sure I'm pronouncing that right, from uh, Tina from A Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, how did playing Tina, the first victim of Freddy Krueger, affect the rest of your career after that? Well, you know, I think, um, I mean, I don't actually know uh, exactly how it affected it, but, you know, it definitely was that first sort of... Well, the first part I did, or the first movie I was in that people took notice of, and, and um, you know, so I, I don't think it hurt my career at all. I definitely think it helped in some way, yeah. Um, I mean, we've, we've spoken about our experiences watching Nightmare on Elm Street many times, but what was it like, you know, working on the original one before it became this mass phenomena, before you guys probably even knew how big it was going to be? What, what are your memories of working on that? Well, First of all, it was incredibly fun, and um, we've all stayed good friends. And you know, it was it was an independent film, so it was like guerrilla filmmaking in a way. And uh, Wes Craven is such a genius, so it was it was just super fun, really. We we all just we were all so young. We just had a great time, and and we knew we were you know working on a good script. And it was nice, yeah. And uh, one of our favorite subgenres here, the MacGuffin podcast, is the Killer Monkey movie. And you worked on Shockma. What? What can you tell us about Shockma? Kind okay. of an underrated gem, in my opinion. Okay. Well, first of all, you are the only human outside <laughs> myself that's ever mentioned the title of that movie. I want to say. Um, okay. I have to say, in all honesty, I've never seen it. But, however, I had the, a blast making it. It was so much fun, and working with the baboon was the scariest thing I've ever done in my entire life. On Screen, yeah. It was terrible. There was a baboon wrangler and there was an electric fence that didn't actually contain it. And um, I felt basically endangered for my life the entire time working on that movie. I, I, would, I, 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 mean, I would personally say you haven't made it in film until you've worked with a monkey until on camera. Until you've worked with a monkey. <laughs> I have to agree. And the monkey took a shine to me, literally. Yeah, like there was a couple times where I looked over and the monkey had his hand on a wall and was making eyes at me. And I was like, um, I think your monkey likes me and I don't like it. <laughs> Although I don't know, is a baboon technically a monkey? It's probably an ape, I would I'll call it a monkey. Yeah, okay. well, 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 for the purposes of this, we're calling it a monkey. Okay, now, not to, like, co-op this completely, but you've actually seen the movie. Yeah, I and, like it. Oh, you did? I think the monkey attacks in that movie, the baboon attacks, I think are the scariest monkey attacks I've seen in a movie. Because the monkey was actually attacking us. Yeah, like, slamming against the doors. It <laughs> yeah. looks like it's breaking its entire body, okay. slamming against the doors. <laughs> okay, let me tell you. I'm, I have little... And your camera woman will understand. I had little slippery ballet flats that I wore. And there was a scene where I had to run down in a linoleum hallway and get into the bathroom and close the bathroom door, which is a scene I'm sure you remember because you've seen it. And they're like, now, run as fast as you can. <laughs> and make sure you get the door closed and then we'll have a man back there to make sure the door is held closed but don't slip or fall or anything because once we let the baboon go it's gonna chase you till it gets to the door so like I almost died of a heart attack I was like I, I don't think I, I could have won the Olympics I ran so fast but my foot slipped as I got to the oh, door God. and literally like I slid like into home base going in and the, the, the baboon hit the door so hard that the man couldn't hold it closed. Oh my God. Yeah, so that was how that movie went. So it was really exciting. <laughs> uh, I mean, beyond beyond Nightmare on Elm Street, you worked on uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Better Off Dead. What was it sort of like to see all these people who exploded on the scene as you're like watching them before your eyes grow up, I mean, almost? Well, I feel really fortunate to get to have worked with so many yeah. amazing actors that deservedly have gone on to great heights. Uh, just their sheer talent and their good choices and, and yeah I feel really fortunate that I got to be a part of I don't know, a part of projects that they were in. And uh, do you have any upcoming projects or is there a place where people can stay up to date on you like a website or something like that? I'm actually just building a website now. I'm a little behind of the times. <laughs> so it's coming. Um, I just came out on DVD is The Graves which is a, a really terrific new indie horror film by the Ronald Brothers produced it and Brian 
Polito directed it, which is really good, and uh, a film by Robert Kurtzman, who a lot of people know who he is, called To Live and Die. Um, and and those are the two that I, I just completed. So yeah. So and again, like really cool that the Ronalds brothers and Brian Polito are I think like really uh, innovative young filmmakers. So and I think without question, looking back on your career, if you have your pulse on it, it seemed to have turned out pretty well. You seem to have a gift or something. Ah uh, well, I don't know about that, but you know I feel pretty blessed. So it's all good. It's awesome. Again, thank you so much for doing this interview and uh, there you have it. Thank you both of you. Thank you.